How was your day? Today, after a busy day. Didn't you have more work to do than you wanted to do? Early in the morning, run over by people, to school, to work. I've been constantly competing with people all day and being evaluated. Can we just live our little lives at will? Why do you lead a tired body and go to the designated place at the appointed time every day? Why couldn't I say anything at that moment but just hesitated? These days, many modern people share these concerns. Numerous psychological books are pouring in every day, comforting them or demanding a change in behavior. But this doesn't end with a single consolation, and it doesn't start with a personal fault in the first place. That's because all the individual behaviors are dominated by society. What do you mean? Obviously, we each live in a society of millions of people. The vast majority of the people that make up the society are invisible, but they're connected so that society has some invisible power to control individuals. The invisible power of society controls individual instincts and desires every moment through law, culture, tradition, and so on. That's why our personal lives cannot be separated from the society. This concept is called social facts. The person who made the concept was Emile Durkheim, a French sociologist. Society exists outside the individual and exerts force on individual thinking and behavior. The society is not just a nominal concept, which consists of the sum of individuals, but actually exists in the form of laws, institutions, cultures, etc., and affects individuals in reality. I'll prove this through scientific research. Durkheim introduced the theory of social facts to the public and argued that it should be the main subject of sociological studies, and it's been scientifically proven by a book called Suicide which we know very well. The first scientific approach to social phenomena, the birth of social science. From now on, let's talk about Emil Durkheim, the great sociologist who created the sensation of his time. Durkheim's theory has historically significant value. So let's first look at the background of his time. Durkheim was born to a Jewish family in France in 1858. France was in a period of political turmoil due to the French Revolution and Napoleon's expedition to Russia. And at the same time, as the Industrial Revolution from the UK has spread across Europe, there was a drastic change in economy and society. In a time of chaos when people who had been farmers all their lives became factory workers, and people were dying of revolution and war, Durkheim thought about how to establish social order. He determined to establish social order through sociology after learning it that just appeared at that time. But the sociology before Durkheim was quite abstract and unscientific. Durkheim thought that in order to calm chaos and establish social order, specific research was needed in order to persuade people. So he created the concept of social facts. Social facts is the thing that exerts real influence on people, and sociologists should study it in a scientific way and prove it to people. This concept sets the subject of social studies apart from other disciplines, and allows post-Durkheim sociologists to do more specific and systematic research. Then let's take a closer look at what sociological research is in his famous work, Suicide. In the days of Durkheim's life, it was common belief that mental illness or genetic factors were the main causes of suicide. But Durkheim's statistical findings have proven that mental illness, heredity, constitution, climate, seasons, and suicide are not related at all. Because the society has a greater impact on individuals than personal reasons or natural phenomena. There are three main causes of suicide, selfish suicide, altruistic suicide, and anomic suicide. First of all, selfish suicide doesn't mean people commit suicide because they are selfish. Selfish suicide appears when the individualism intensifies, connections with others or integration with society is weakened. It is easy to understand when you think of the head of a household in his 30s and the elderly living alone. The head of the household is connected to a small society called family. So no matter how hard it is, he's holding it in for his family. But the old living alone is more likely to choose suicide because such factors do not exist. Secondly, altruistic suicide is the opposite of selfish suicide. It's a case where individuals commit suicide because they are too connected to the society. A case in point is Kamikaze, who committed suicide for the Japanese Empire during World War II. They were so close to society then their sense of duty as soldiers to protect Japanese society won the instinct of survival as human beings and drove their aircrafts into the U.S. warships. Finally, before I talk about anomic suicide, what is anime? Durkheim said, individual needs are limited by society through norms. But if the norm disappears, individuals lose guidelines on how to choose what they want to do, which is anime. 
In other words, enemy is a chaotic state in which the answer to an individual's behavior has disappeared. One example is Bitcoin. Bitcoin, a new technology, was once used for speculation and crime when there was no cryptocurrency regulation. Durkheim used anime to suggest anomic suicide. As society changes, previous values lose meaning, and as a result, people's standards of conduct are not clearly presented, resulting in anime, which increases suicide. Durkheim concluded that suicide is not determined by individual factors such as nervous breakdowns, but by social circumstances. He emphasized the importance of the social facts through the theory of suicide and that the pure individualistic actions such as suicide are also the result of the involvement of the social power. And sociological studies have shown that the study should always be based on statistics, not vague thinking. We've talked about Durkheim and his research so far. Is something that has power actually giving us instructions for actions like a traffic light? We can think about this question that Durkheim would answer, yes. The video ends here. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and like it. Thanks.